One Zambia, One Nation, thank you so much for joining us on TV2 News Art 18 Hours to present it. My name is Ellen Hambova. We look at stories making headlines this evening. Now, a couple has been apprehended for allegedly storing nine 20 liter buckets of fecal matter in their house in Lusaka's China compound. Vice President Inongewina has reassured the United Nations UN of Zambia's commitment to promoting gender equality. In sports, both in Kana and Zanako are out of the CAF Continental Club competition. Another news in detail. A couple has been apprehended for allegedly storing nine 20 liter buckets of fecal matter in their house in Nusaka's China compound. The couple was picked up by a combined team of security personnel and public health official officials on Wednesday, March 14, 2018. This is after neighbors alerted authorities following the foul smell coming from their suspected home. We have details in this report. Some things are better off unspoken, but the bizarre occurrence of Wednesday the 14th of March in Lusaka's China compound, though despicable, still is the talk of the area. It allegedly all took place in this poorly ventilated one-room house. <laughs> Police have already received the report of the incident and the spokesperson describes how the bizarre occurrence was officially penned. But when officers went there, they did their own investigations and it came to our attention to say that um, uh, the wife of the same man does not participate in the cleaning of the communal toilet. This family uses the communal toilet together with other members of the public in the same area. Now the wife did not participate in the cleaning of the toilet, the communal toilet, and this is how the neighbors decided to stop the, this family from using the, the toilet. So um, they later resorted to defecating in a bucket and then keep the rubbish in the house and then dispose it off later in the night. There are many theories trying to justify the strange behavior by the couple, but every sensible witness to the incident says one cannot justify the unjustifiable. <laughs> The house has since been disinfected and the couple, after they are released from police custody, moved to an area where their past may be less conspicuous. Penlopsi Kazwe, TV2 News, Lusaka. Now, the Joint Task Force in the fight against cholera has continued with cleaning works around Osaka. A check by TV2 News found Zambia Army personnel conducting and facilitating a cleaning exercise in Osaka's Mutendere compound. And Army spokesperson Colonel David Sanene says the task force has also continued barring shallow wells in Kanyama and Mississippi compound. We have details in this report. Has continued for these men in uniform. This road, previously impassable in Lusaka's Mutendere compound, is now clear. Eventually, order has returned to Kazimai markets. I have spoken to traders who are thankful. 
wavuto wa manage na market market yetu inazula then tiliba oti tingankale tilibe malo wanaeso tufuna malo ya nasoba kilini yeze mwandi tayamikira eh tsemeza nawo cha bebu you know siba dirudi a a tili nawo cha be friend oki dina mwandi watu hawa awe watipunze sa kilini ko Gofu na dote zona nasi tia mikira mamene kwa mbo onika yuti kwa onika kilini Kwa madanda ula meti ilipo munga isaifa meti maudavi makatundu munga vimakabijezi mkatu mtilipio plesi ya kutiti ngafagemo vintu Meanwhile, Zambia Army spokesperson Colonel David Sanene says work continues for the defense personnel This road was blocked and it was impassable But when our men moved on site, they have brought sanity here the traders have, they bring here and then the marketeers buy from them, they go straight into the market. They don't, they no longer sell along, along the road. Colonel Sanene has further urged the general public to continue supporting this noble cause. We are still on the ground, we are still maintaining a footprint in all the places where we have been assigned to do the work. Once the rightful time comes, uh, when the situation will call for us to pull out, we are going to pull out. Let's work together as they have done. We are not here to brutalize uh, our own locals as it is being insinuated by other media houses and other people. We are here for them. We are here to do a task that we have been called upon to do by. One can only hope that the public mindset will have changed for the better at the end of this cleaning exercise. Luando Hamwala, TV2 News, Lusaka. Now, a 34-year-old woman has allegedly been abducted by unknown people and later thrown off a moving vehicle, leaving her for dead in Lusaka's Chilenje area. Police are since investigating the matter which happened on Thursday, March 15, 2018, around 20 hours near the waterworks area in Chilenje. The woman who was drunk at the time of the incident was left unconscious with her heads and legs tied together. Police spokesperson Esther Katongo has confirmed to TV2 News in a statement explaining that the woman was later found by the police and taken to Chilenje Hospital and was discharged yesterday. Ms. Katongo has said, according to an eyewitness, the woman was dropped off from a Toyota Ranex registration number BAG4456, gold in color, which had three male persons on board. She has added that the police has established that a woman had been drinking beer with the same suspects before the incident. Police are appealing to members of the public with information on the whereabouts of the suspects to report to the nearest police station. You're still watching the TV2 News at 18 hours just now. We take a break and when we come back, we have more stories. Keep watching. Well, we'll come back. We'll continue with the news now. Reconstruction of the Lusaka City Market will start around mid this year, in which works will be undertaken by a mining firm, which has already offered to do so. Local Government Permanent Secretary Amos Malupenga has confirmed and says this will be done after the Simon Mwewa Lane Market is constructed. Mr. Malupenga has explained that the costs of the works at the market which was last year gutted by fire, will only be known when the design works are completed and handed over to the respective firm. Mr. Malpenga was speaking on Seven Days Today on a TV2 News and Current Affairs segment. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning, as soon as the Simon Moalene market is done, then we have to relocate. As we speak now, we, the works could have started. It is just because of the, the cholera situation, mm -hmm. and then we had to get everyone out of the streets. So we find ourselves with a number of people with no room for trading. And that is why we said just to, as we are making these other alternative arrangements in coming up with new trading places, let's hold uh, some traders in the old city market. When Simon Moalene is done, in the next four months, uh, all things being equal, then those in city market will have to move uh, to Simon Moalene, and then works in NS will have to start. So by June, July, reconstruction of city market will start. And when Now, government is happy with the progress in the implementation of the Lusaka Water Supply, Sanitation and Drainage Project. This was after some cabinet ministers toured various sites of the project, financially supported by the Millennium Challenge Account, MCA Zambia. 
and the ministers include Water Development Minister Dennis Wanchinga, Lusaka Province Minister Boman Lusambo, and Minister in the Office of the Vice President Sylvia Chalikosa. We have details in this report. A familiarization tour by cabinet ministers. They are checking on the various works being implemented by the Millennium Challenge Account Zambia MCA. This is in the Lusaka Water Supply Sanitation and Drainage Project. In the delegation is Lusaka Province Minister Boman Lusambo, Water Development Minister Dennis Wanchinga, as well as Minister in the Office of the Vice President, Sylvia Chalikosa. The team from the MCA Zambia is also part of the delegation. Among the sites toward are Kaunda Square Ponds, Kwamwena Ground Reservoir, and the Mazopa Drainage. MCA officials took time explaining various works the company is undertaking. Solid waste and silt are a major problem. Uh, last year we were being asked, why have you built it and been buried? But it's not us, that's the silt and solid waste that is coming out of the city. So that's why there are also these efforts to improve the solid waste collection. And the cabinet ministers are impressed with the work so far. However, they have some recommendations to make. This will impact negatively on the environment. The, the water downstream will be affected, the impacts upon the quality of water for the people downstream. Um, so what we are saying now is that uh, we need to engage the, the local community, uh, sensitize them about the importance of looking after this facility as well. Ms. Charikosa is concerned with the residents who are swimming in the Bombay drainage and wants this to come to an end. This drainage uh, facility has been filled to the top and um, the people who are resident in this area have been seen to be swimming in this water. This water is contaminated, it's dirty, it's coming from toilets. So when you drink that water, if you're swimming and the water happens to go in your mouth, the chances are that you will get some waterborne disease. Meanwhile. MCA Chief Executive Officer Pamela Waria says 70% of the works under the Lusaka Sanitation and Drainage Project have been done so far. The project is supposed to come to an end in November 2018. So in terms of implementation of the entire uh, project, which includes water supply, sanitation and drainage, I can say that uh, we are at 70% complete. The ministers winded up their tour at the Bombay drainage in Maziopa compound. Lucky Piri, TV2 News, Lusaka. Well, just now we go for another break and when we come back Munali constituency pupils in a book bumper harvest do join us after the break Saka's Munali member of parliament Nkanduluo has challenged the girl child to defy all odds and get better academic grades in school Professor Luo who is also high education minister made the challenge when she made a donation of books to 10 schools in Munali ward 33 we have details in this report of books to 10 schools in Lusaka's Munali Ward 33 is what she has come to do. The donation is made up of over 20,000 books for pupils in both government and community schools in the area. Munali Member of Parliament Nkanduluo has handed over the books. In making the donation, Professor Luo has a word of advice to the pupils. She wants, especially the girl child, to defy all odds and get good grades. So if I can finish my secondary education, finish my university education, up to the highest, which is a PhD, and teach most of the doctors you see, encourage you, girls, that you can excel when you want. So the president, the president saw it fit to contribute to one of the daunting problems, that of having access to books. So this afternoon, I'm a bearer of a message from His Excellency the President through this donation of books. Meanwhile, the area councillor and school head teachers are happy with this donation. Please, Honorable, but Professor, continue 
speaking for us, continue lobbying for all our needs in our constituency. From that, Ward 33, we are very much humbled and please pass our sincere gratitude to His Excellency. This donation has come at the right time. As you know, our schools need such support and especially that we have among our learners vulnerable children who will benefit more from this donation of educational books. The gesture could not end without a word from the beneficiaries. I'd like to give thanks and appreciation to the Honorable Member of Parliament for Munali constituency for the donation of books to the pupils in our zone. Distinguished guests, this, gest this gesture will go a long way in alleviating the challenges of accessing learning materials. In the same vein, we would like to appeal to you to continue showing us your motherly love by giving us more in such areas as student study shelters in our zone schools and computers to, enha to enhance e-learning. We are indeed grateful that you took time off your busy schedule to be with us and more importantly choosing Kaunda Square Zone out of the other zones. We shall live up to the challenge you have set for us and you promise we'll, be, and you promise we'll put the books to good use. This donation will go a long way for pupils in this area. Leandro Hamwala, TV2 News, Lusaka. Now, Vice President Inongewina has reassured the United Nations UN of Zambia's commitment to promoting gender equality. Ms. Wena has since urged the UN women to consider establishing an office in Zambia for enhanced collaboration. ZNBC's Kennedy Wilder reports that the Vice President said this when she called on UN Women Executive Director Mizila Milamba Kucheka at her office in New York. Ms. Wina has said Zambia is working at promoting women participation in key decision-making positions at various levels in society. And Dr. Milambo Kusika has praised the Zambian government for providing good leadership in enhancing the welfare of women and girl child. Empowering women uh, so that we promote uh, gender equality nationally and of course uh, regionally and internationally. Mm. Uh, it's our wish that um, uh, this work should be in collaboration with your office yes, yes, much more yes, yes, than yes, it has yes, been. Yes, yes, yes. And we appreciate the 20, <coughs> the 20 offices, mm. UN women mm. in Africa, <laughs> they are in, in benefiting from the UN uh, women from South Africa, mm. from Nairobi, from mm. Malawi, mm. but I, we still feel that uh, we need the presence of uh, UN women in Zambia. Mm. Uh, and mm. when that happens, mm. we would like to really cement mm. this relationship mm. Mm. Uh, to push the yes, gender yes, equality yes, yes. forward in our country. Mm. Because also, uh, I mean, I know you lead from the front very much. The president leads from the front. The minister leads from the front. So really, in many ways, uh, you are a model member state. was accompanied by permanent secretary in the vice president's office in charge of parliamentary business Shoko Chilombo and senior private secretary Sheila Suela. Well, just now we go for our last break and when we come back we'll get an update on the Nkana Cup games. Keep watching. Welcome back. Now in sports news, both Nkana and Zanako are out of the Cup Continental Club competition. This is after the two teams failed to overcome their losses in the first leg encounter against their opponent in the pre-group qualification matches at Nkana Stadium in Quito on the Copa Belt. Nkana only managed a slander 1-0 win against Sierra Bella Zidad of Algeria, however not enough against the 3-0 away losses. This was in a return leg of the second round of the group stage qualifier match of the CAF Confederation Cup game played today in the afternoon. ZNBC's Musenge Mulimba reports that in Kana, who needed four unanswered goals to progress to the next round, missed uh, several chances, including a penalty which they could not convert. Coach Beston Chambeshi has described the elimination as painful, especially in the front of home fans. And Sierra Bella's direct coach Rashid Torres is happy 
with the win results, though he says Mkana is a good side, but with a weak defense. Mino Zanako, who are Zambia's other CAF Champions League envoy, have also been eliminated from the lost 1-0 to Mambani Swallows of Swaziland. This was also in with the return leg of the second round group qualifier match. In the backdrop of the 2-1 shock loss they suffered in the first leg here in Lusaka. And Zeska United, the other CAF Champions League envoys, are set to play Asek Mimosa in Ivory Coast, having lost 1-0 at home as well. Well, as we end the news, we look at stories that made headlines once again. A couple have been apprehended for allegedly storing nine 20-litre buckets of fecal matter in their house in Lusaka's Chinda compound. The couple was picked up by a combined team of security personnel and public health officials on Wednesday, March 14, 2018. Vice President Inongewina has reassured the United Nations UN of Zambia's commitment to promoting gender equality. Ms. Wina has since aged the UN women to consider establishing an office in Zambia for enhanced collaboration. And finally, in sports, both Nkana and Zanako are out of the CAF Continental Club competition. This is after the two teams failed to overcome their losses in the first leg encounter against their opponents in their pre-group qualification matches. Well, there we end the news. Thank you so much for watching. Do join us for another detailed bulletin at 20 hours. Thank you so much for watching. Good evening.